Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to another video. I've been out looking for fungi today and there's a lot of fungi around at the moment. It's a fantastic time of year if you want to go out with field guides and start studying and collecting specimens and trying to figure out what they are. And I'm in a woodland here, this is a secondary woodland is what I would call it because all these trees are still growing, they're very young and the mature woodland is really all over there. And we've got a lot of larch, which is what this is here, European larch, um, western red cedar, we have quite a lot of spruces here. Um, a type of fungi that often grows in this area where I'm, where I'm kind of around now is, uh, is the false saffron milk cap, which is Lactarius ditraminus. It's very, very common. Uh, but there's another one which is very uncommon, which I think I've stumbled upon here. And I noticed them all around me as I was walking around and I thought that's the false saffron milk cap. But on closer inspection, it's actually the saffron milk cap, which is Lactarius deliciosus. And you can probably tell by the name, it's a pretty good one to eat. I've cut one open here. And um, really, if it was the false saffron milk cap, the colour of the, the ink should really change and go a very winish reddish colour in about 30 minutes and it should be much greener when it's this mature. It won't have these salmon blotches all over it and the stipe, which is the stem of the fungi, shouldn't have these blotches on either. And uh, there's some really lovely button ones around here. There's one just down there. This is a lovely little button one, quite young, and when you're foraging to eat mushrooms, uh, then um, this is really what you're looking for, not the sort of mature ones, but the ones that are still quite young because the flesh will uh, will be much nicer to eat. But when you're IDing mushrooms, um, you really want to take the whole mushroom out, including the base of the stipe, which is the stem of the mushroom. The reason being is there are families out there that have identifying features that lay under the ground, like bulbs, like the vulva of the Amanita family, which is where the death cap is from. But because I'm fairly familiar with this one, I'm actually going to cut it and not disturb the actual fungi, which is the mycelium below. And I'll just take that there. The trees that are around me, or around this fungi, play a huge role in the identification of the actual fungus itself. And you may be wondering why, if, when, if you're new to fungi and you're getting out there at this time of year, trying to ID them, you really want to be looking at the trees and sometimes even the plants that are around the fungus. And that's because a lot of the fungus that's out there, almost the larger percentage of it all, is what they call mycorrhizal fungi. And what that means is it actually forms a relationship and works with a tree or plant. Um, and that's simply because fungi generally can't photosynthesize and produce its own sugar, its own energy. So what it does is the tree gives it sugar and the fungi, or the mycelium under the ground, which is actually the fungi, this is just the fruit, like an apple off of a tree. Uh, but the fungi under the ground expands a huge network of mycelium, um, which is the actual fungus, and, and that effectively increases the nutrition absorption capacity of the tree. So it's kind of like boosting the tree's root structure. It's like uh, giving it a bigger fuel tank, for example, so it can expand more moisture and it makes the soil better for the tree and it just makes everything much better for the tree and healthier. So the two work together. Um, you do have other kinds of fungi like Piptoporus betulinus that grows on the dying trees and actually has a job in breaking them down. But um, a lot of the fungi out there will be mycorrhizal fungi which will have a relationship with the tree. But I've got myself quite a lot of them here. You can see that we've got some lovely specimens. Because I know the false saffron milk cap grows in this woodland here and it's actually with the more mature trees down in the coniferous woodlands over there. Um, we're going to go and find that and I'm going to compare the two um, just to confirm some ID and slice them in half and have a look at them, see the discoloration in the sap as it reacts with the oxygen and you can see the difference between the two. So let's go see if we can find it. Here we are. I think we're in luck and this looks like a good one as well. Let's have a good look at these. Very happy to find one of these. I was very worried that they'd all be too far gone. And a lot of them I was finding the other day in this area of the woodland here were, um, were so rotten. They were very greenish. And that was interesting because, you know, they reached that maturity 
and they'd really discoloured where there is the saffron milk caps further up um, even the mo most mature ones have still retained their colour and hadn't deteriorated to like a, an inky green but we'll take this one here and we'll just have a close look but we found a lot of mushrooms today um, lots on the way here but um, this is the one I was after so if we take that one there we can see a distinct difference in them almost immediately even in where the gills uh, slightly decurrent gills there where they connect to the actual stipe and you can see there it's quite different blotching on the stem just a completely pale orange well not pale but a bright orange stem there and um, yeah quite different really even the edge is slightly rolled whether it's that slightly more uh, flatter quite brittle rustler family so they're, they're all brittle in most respects and the top is very different as well but I think what we should do is, is cut this one open have a look inside you can see quite a difference there actually put that one there and we should get some discoloration and now we have to wait so I've been waiting for about 30 minutes for some discoloration in the actual milk and you can see that the false saffron milk cap has turned sort of like a red winey colour whereas the saffron milk cap has stayed an orange colour, this, the actual milk of the fungus so um, it's a very good identifying feature and whilst I was actually waiting um, around I did a bit of a circle of this area here and found some false saffron milk caps and these ones you can see are very old and this is generally what I expect them to look like when they're too far gone they start to go a greeny colour and um, they really deteriorate and uh, look very very different to the saffron milk cap which when old it actually still retains quite a lot of its colour and um, doesn't sort of go a really off green like the false saffron milk cap. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is just something that I like to do at this time of year and I thought I'd share it with you, come out and identify fungi and I may go out and uh, do a few more videos on it. But thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Take care guys and I'll see you soon.